everybody it's a video about electron energy and I'm doing it in my science department shirt notice they have a Bohr model logo which is incorrect and you know I tried to talk to them about it but no this is it the Bohr model okay right. today we're going to demo a little bit more of the macro evidence that electrons have energy there's plenty of evidence all around us but uh, some evidence is more fun than others this is a Tesla coil what it does is generate a huge potential energy difference between the tip and the air around it and to relieve that potential energy difference electrons are released from the tip so let's see what that looks like okay so I'm plugging it in it doesn't have an on off switch which is pretty weird and uh, I'm just bringing it up to a very good conductor, which is just iron. And you can see that the electrons are drawn toward the, that very good conductor. They're drawn toward that very good conductor. And there's an arc, an arc of electrons. We actually are not seeing the electrons themselves. What the electrons are doing is energizing the air, uh, the, uh, the air molecules, oxygen and nitrogen. And those are being energized to an excited state and when they go to back to their ground state they release light and that's the arc that we're seeing that that ionized air uh, as the electrons arc from the tip to the conducting metal okay so what we have here is a uh, plastic bottle with two iron nails sticking out of either end you can see that they're rusty I've been using this for a while now at some point it's going to explode, but I'm not going to worry about it today. Um, although I will wear goggles just in case. So uh, what I'd like, I'd like you to see the, that we talked about conduct, conductive materials. Uh, the iron nails are extremely conductive. There's about almost an inch of space between the tips of each nail. And uh, let's see what happens when I bring the electrons up to one end of the nail of one of the nails so what I hope you can see is that the electrons actually arc from one nail to the other uh, inside the inside the bottle another little demo as uh, giving us a piece of evidence that electrons do in fact contain energy and here it is uh, using what we have just seen the uh, electrons arcing from one nail to the other. What I'm going to do is put ethyl alcohol into this bottle. And uh, we're just gonna see what happens. We're gonna see, do you think anything interesting will happen? Like what? Here's the little bit of al ethyl alcohol, which is just the name that we scientists give to alcohol. When people say alcohol, they're talking about ethanol, otherwise known as ethyl alcohol. It's now in the jug as a, in a liquid form. I'm gonna shake it. Alcohol is a very, uh, is a very volatile substance. Volatility is just simply meaning that, simply refers to how uh, easily it evaporates. Alcohol is very volatile, mean, meaning it evaporates very readily. So as I shake it, it's going into the vapor uh, state. They, and you have to shake it exactly right. The wrist action is so incredibly important. We need to learn these techniques. And as soon as you get back in the classroom, we'll be shaking bottles full of alcohol. Okay. I put a cork on top, a red uh, rubber stopper. I want you to think, what's gonna happen when those electrons arc from one nail to the other? And this goes back to the question, do the electrons have any energy? I'm going to bring it up, I'm going to bring it up to the, uh, one of the nails, and we're gonna see if anything interesting happens. Something interesting happened. 
Okay, so the rubber stopper has uh, been blown off. Where did it go? <laughs> Do you see that hole? It actually uh, made a hole in the ceiling. And the so quite a bit of energy uh, was created. The, elect the electrons ignited the alcohol. The alcohol turned into uh, much, many more gaseous particles that expanded. They, were ha they had very high kinetic energy and they pushed the rubber stopper out. And this is basically how a piston engine works. This is exactly how a piston engine works in an automobile. And lots of other things we could uh, spend time on, which we will when we get to chemical reactions. Okay, that's it.